This music sounds pretty victorious now. Hey guys, Cruisnick X back with more Final Fantasy XIV goodness. When we last left off, we had finally, finally, finally gotten through the final steps of faith and defeated Nidhogg once and for all. We are now going to celebrate our victory and finish up this patch with a bet, with hopefully a bang. <sighs> Your battle with Nidhogg's Shade will beget many an epic ballad, Chris. And rightly so, it, wa it was without a doubt one of your more epochal victories. Though I must admit that I took greater joy in seeing you emerge from the experience unscathed. And not only for your own sake. Had you not been there to aid me, those infernal eyes would still be fused to Asinian's mail. Yet even with Nidhogg gone, I cannot help but wonder how much of our friend remains. Let us pay a visit to Lucia and beg news of this con beg news of his condition. Chris, Master Alfino, my honored friends, as if winning her Esmago to our cause were not enough, you took it upon yourselves to rid us of his brood brother. I know not how to thank you. My own contribution was hardly noteworthy. The true saviors of the day were Chris and Instidian. One triumph over Nidhogg's shade through strength of arms, and the other through strength of will. And speaking of Estinian, what news of his recovery? The Azure Dragoon was conveyed to the infirmary, where he now resides under the care of our Hospitalia Captain. I am told he has yet to regain consciousness. But as you know, Estinian's mind and body were held hostage for many days. We must be patient and allow the process of healing to begin. In the meantime, you would do well to rest and recover from your own ordeals. But surely, Sir Emmerich is never long from Estinian's bedside, and will send word the moment there are any developments. Now, if I have satisfied your concerns, I believe Lord Edmond and his sons are most eager to celebrate your return. Very well, First Commander. Come, Chris. Twould seem, twould seem we are awaited at Fort Hall Manor. Welcome, welcome, Master Valentine. Shall I show you inside the banner? Oh man, it feels so good to say that again. <laughs> welcome, Master Valentine. Oh man. The heroes of the hour return. We but did our duty, my lord. It was the memories of fallen friends and not our heroism which saw us through at the last. I gave every ons of my strength. My efforts would have counted for naught. Sworn knight of Ishgard, I had hoped to do more for my city. Well, we cannot all be heroes, dear brother. Let us put away our pride for a moment and revel in the valiant deeds of our comrade. For your sterling service to Ishgard, we salute you. Thank you, Emily Lane. Subject of valiant deeds, 
I believe I myself have earned some small measure of recognition. Under my watchful command, the ballistas of the Outer Ward struck down a veritable swarm of Dravanian invaders. My lord's command was certainly watchful. He bravely watched as the siege crews took aim, and continued to watch as countless wyverns met their end. Indeed, the ward's defenders proved so well drilled that my lord had little occasion to stop watching. <laughs> Locked him down a peg on a while. There will be time enough to determine who is most deserving of recognition later. Our friends are doubtless weary from their exertions. I had chambers prepared in expectation of your return. You are welcome to retire at your leisure. Do we get to see those rooms? I'm grateful for your hospitality, my lord. But I believe I shall pay a visit to the Temple Knights Infirmary. Pray excuse me. Master Alfino has grown. The plight of his stricken brother in arms pains him more than his own loss. In which respect he has come to resemble you, warrior of light. Go then, visit the Azure Dragoon, and grant him what comfort you may. Oh, I want to see the bed. All right, back to the congregation of a knight's most heavenly. Which way am I going? This way. Wait, but it's... Chris, my friend. What can I do for the savior of Ishgard? You seek Master Alfino. Aha. Uh -huh. He came to relieve me of my vigil a short while ago. When he begged to sit at the Stinian side, I could not well refuse him. Though he would sooner faint than admit it, the boy must be exhausted by Harry's Vargas trial and all that followed. Estinian is blessed to have such devoted comrades. All right, let's finish this up. My own friendship with the Stinian began some ten years past, shortly after we joined the Temple Knights. I learned his name soon enough, but Estinian barely registered my existence. I was less a fellow recruit and more a shadow, which occasionally darkened his path. And so I might have remained, had fate not seen fit to intervene. While out on patrol, our company was set upon by a dragon, and we were the only two to survive. The experience forged a bond between us, as such life-threatening situations are wont to do. Despite our friendship, he remained an intense and, sol and solitary youth, wholly obsessed with claiming vengeance against Nidhogg. Revenge was ever at a forefront, the forefront of his mind. Revenge for the death of his parents, and revenge for his younger brother. I would venture that Alfino, he's, 
I would venture that in Alfino he sees something of his lost sibling. And in the ungentle childings of his dinning, Alfino has found the elder brother he never had. Truth be told, Estinian's tactless observations have saved us from saved me from disaster more than once, and I can well understand Alfino's affection for him. He is a friend for whom I would gladly Lord Commander, your presence is required in the infirmary Is he? Tell tell them I am on my way. Quickly, Chris, we must go to him. Upon proceeding to the infirmary, blah, blah, blah. Yep. I've got plenty of time. Let's do this. Ah, uh, don't. And I could not. It was such a relief. We feared you might never wake up. Jesus, don't fucking scare us like that, Alfino. Now, now, now Astinian. If Master Alfino thought any less of you, you would still be Nidhogg's plaything. Or dead. Mostly dead. in defense of Ishgard as is your duty. Were you any less single-minded about it, I would not follow you into battle and trust you with my back. Besides, I had come to the self-same conclusion. I would have to perish for Nidhogg to be stopped. So let us dispense with the hand-wringing. I have heard enough kneeling for one day. Oh. <laughs> Still a ball buster, Estinian. The tendrils of Nidhogg's foul presence bound up every fiber of my being, usurping my senses, but I yet retain some trace of awareness. of the hatred I felt after Nidhogg slew my family, when no path remained save vengeance against Dragonkind. Neither one of us had a 
choice. But I was blessed with something Nidhogg was not. Comrades and teachers to console and admonish me. Had I not had them to gainsay my obsession, it would surely have consumed me as Nidhogg's did him, and we would have been in all respects alike. Though his shade is banished, his spirit scattered upon the sea of clouds, I feel no joy at his passing. Where once I craved vengeance, I now crave rest. Lord Commander, my hunt is at an end. I would lay down the mantle of Azure Dragoon. My friend. has tired himself with too many words. I doubt not that he will make a full recovery, but he must be allowed some few days of quiet. So now what? Following the battle with Nidhogg on the steps of faith, Sir Emery called an assembly that he might make his final proclamation as acting head of state. It was there, with one decree, that the thousand-year rule of the archbishops was ended, paving the way for a new republic. The governance of Ishgard would now be placed in the hands of high and lowborn alike, their ranks represented by the newly founded House of Lords and House of Commons. Church was separated from state. The foundation for change had been carefully laid, and the reforms proposed by Ishgard's new government passed into law without incident. His duty done, Emmerich de Borel gladly stepped down from the Archbishop's dais, only to be raised into the highest seat in the House of Lords. <laughs> Though he strove at first to refuse this honor, the unexpectedly strident voice of the Count de Durandere left him little choice but to accept. And so it was that the winds of gentle revolution came to stir. Prominent among the many honored guests at Sir Emmerich's investiture were the ambassadors of Dragonkind, a fitting symbol of Ishgard's newfound peace. The 
people looked on in awe as he soared through the heavens on dragon back. And by their cheers did they hail him an azure dragoon for a new And where is Estinian going? Thus were the notes of the dragon song rewritten, the din of war giving way to a rising litany of peace and hope. Oh, we escorted Trace Vulgar home. Okay. And me and Midgard Zorma are still going to remain... And me and Midgard Zorma are still going to be the best of friends. <laughs> From the memoirs of Count Edmond de Fauton, Heaven's Ward. Wow. Yep, and his stain's not at his bedside. The helmet is still there, but his spear's not. So... I might as well speak with Sir Emmerich. I was gazing out at the sea of clouds, in an all too rare moment of idleness, when I chanced to behold a certain hero wending his way towards the city on Dragonback. <laughs> Welcome home, Chris. Nay. "'Twas no grave matter that moved me to greet you in person. "'Between you and me I merely sought respite from the pleasures of office. "'No sooner do I surrender my role as temporary head of state "'than I am burdened with a position of more permanent responsibility. "'I fancy that it echoes in some small measure the way you must feel "'when your improbable feats of heroism are rewarded with still more impossible challenges.' The myth which guided our society for generations lies in tatters. Am I then to be scorned for building upon the system of nobility that I once sought to tear down? And what strange jest is this that places me at its pinnacle? An archbishop's bastard at the head of the House of Lords. Huh. These questions are for me to answer. 
It is not in a man's nature to change overnight. This I learned through painful experience. And it was this hard lesson which convinced me to t take the path we which we now follow. Even as we build the we rebuild the bridge between man and dragon, so must we reimagine Ishgard, one carefully placed stone at a time. We must remember that it is not for us that we lay this groundwork, but for the men and women that our children will become. May their towers rise proudly from the fundament of our legacy. I hear a word from Captain Whitescape that Estinian has vanished from his sick room. His wolfiness survives undiminished. Should he ever happen in upon our unmannerly friend in your travels, pray assure him that I shall keep Ishgard safe until he deigns to come home. Thank you, Chris. And please convey my warmest regards to Master Alfie now. You spoke with Sir Emmerich. I do not envy him in his new position. Ishgard has chosen a new road, but one littered with the detri mm, the detritus of a thousand years of broken faith. Yet though her people may stumble from time to time, I know of none better than Sir Emmerich to lead the march of progress. As for us, there remains the small matter of ushering in a new dawn in the shadow of inscrutable or Asian machinations and a seemingly endless procession of primals. But we too must walk our chosen path, no matter how treacherous is the footing. In the wake of Ishgard's govern governmental reform. New airship routes have been sanctioned. You may now travel to a selection of distant locales from the landing in Ishgard. Is that... The warrior, one of the warriors of darkness. He's going to get the eyes of Nidhogg. Great. We should have destroyed them. Or at least given them the race vulgar to devour. Thank you, Blenhats. Nay, you need not remain there. We shall rendezvous at the usual place. All is proceeding as expected, then. Aye, there is not to concern us, aside from one overly curious m mouse. Say. And who should show this way? Him again. Hmm. It is of no moment. They will play their part 
and we will play ours. <sighs> and thus did gray mists give way to azure skies. Man and dragon rise above, voices joined in song. But beneath shrouded bows, beyond the scope of light, shadow stirs. And we've achieved the unlock. We've unlocked the achievement. Floor the horde. With it, we get some new. Uh, I think we get a new title. Yep, the Dragon Song. On top of that, we do get in our inventory. We get a wind-up Emmerich. And we got the Dragon Song Orchestrian Roll. And we got one more thing that I think ended up in. Yep. It ended up in our. And maybe without the. The gloves. And with different slacks. Nope. If only we could find out where Lord Edmont was, we'd... Oh, and we can hide the sword for right now. Meh. I really don't like make these puffy coats as much. But I mean... It is pretty nice, all things considered. I like the design too. Ugh. And as the sun sets on Ishgard, we celebrate a new time of peace. Let's see, uh... See where Emina Lane is. There he is. Wonderful to see you, old boy. Come to fulfill a craving for the latest sword and gossip, have we? Well, I'm sorry to say I have not for you. My nightly duties have kept me far too busy to stay abreast of the arc of the town. My lord has been most conscientious with his duties of late. I worry that mayhap he was struck in the head by a stray projectile during the last battle. Psh. Well, with that, we finally bring the Dragon Song War to a close and the end of this storyline. It feels so good to say that. It feels so good to be caught up. And now I. And now I can wait for the 27th. But before we go, I just like to travel a little bit. Let's hit 
the bar. I feel like having a drink. Let's see what get. When I heard the horde was at the gates, I let folk take shelter here at the night. Those were ten those were a tense few hours. Even a few cups of wine couldn't dull the edge of fear for some. And then came the news of your victory over Nidhogg. My ears still ring from the deafening cheer that went up, up from every throat in the room. I swear they meant you to hear it out there on the bridge. <sighs> okay, I'm getting pretty tired, and I think after a job well done, I deserve a rest. So with this, I'm going to sign off for the night. Thank you all for watching, especially everyone who decided to comment um, from Dark Gamer 69 uh, to X Hacks Muffin, Frey Reis, Hall ha Optic, um, Hey Shay, K Cause 88, um, Emmerich's Waifu. Uh, I I remember that one pretty well. Um, but thank you all for, uh, making this a pretty memorable patch. But until next time, I'm gonna sign off and take some much-needed rest. Until next time, Kruznik X, signing out.